All right, now I'm pretty excited about this course because not only is this something that's really fun for me doing this, uh, you know, the actual site flipping, uh, but showing other people how to do it is really cool because this is something that really is easy. It's not a scam type of thing. You know, there's a lot of gimmick stuff out there where people say, hey, you know, push this button and make a million bucks. Uh, none of that stuff works. But site flipping is something that really does. And if you're kind of like got the mentality that you like, you know, geeky, techy kind of stuff, I know me personally, the reason site flipping was so attractive to me is because it allowed me to do exactly what I love doing. And that is the uh, from the technical side of it, doing all the research and picking cool stuff, putting it all together, building a site, and then bam, it's done. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to do anything after that. I don't want to try to send a whole bunch of traffic to the site necessarily, right? I like setting the site up. I like that part of it. Uh, but you know, really, it doesn't matter if that's not your favorite thing to do because it is so easy to actually do it, especially with uh, what I'm going to be talking to you about. It's kind of a a little bit of a different twist on what most people do out there. Most people for site flipping, you know, I'll get into all the details here in, in just a little bit, but most people start from scratch uh, or they use very lame generic templates. Uh, and that's just not cool. It just doesn't work. Uh, we're going to talk about how I earn 1200 bucks in two days flipping websites and now why I do this full time. As in, this is my baby. Okay, love doing this. So let's talk about exactly what site flipping is in a nutshell it is where you go out and either you buy an existing website or you set up your own website and then you want to sell that site for profit so your goal is get the site and then sell it to somebody else and make some money the way that you do that is by improving on the site you have to give it more value you have to make it worth something an idea isn't worth much, okay? but something tangible, something that's ready to go, that's worth something. What we're going to be talking about doing here is literally taking uh, an idea, taking a niche, finding a hot niche, and then getting a product for that niche and setting up a website that literally is turnkey. In other words, somebody can come along, they can buy your site. All they have to do is maybe update, uh, you know, the uh, the PayPal link code, you know, that kind of stuff. And they are going to actually have a business already set up and ready to go. If they send traffic to it, bam, that's it, makes money. Okay, really, and believe it or not, this is pretty simple to do. And, and the reason that it's so cool is because... A lot of people, uh, you know, there's a lot of newbies out there, and there's also a lot of people that maybe they're not newbies, but they don't want to, you know, mess around with all the technical stuff. And what they end up usually doing is outsourcing it. They uh, they end up outsourcing somebody to set up their website. They outsource somebody to create content for them. They outsource somebody to, you know, connect all the dots and make it where it actually works and does something. And then, uh, then they send traffic to it. Well, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I'm just going to do all that for you for one price. You just pay. This is already done. You don't have to wait and screw around with waiting for people to contact you uh, and, and telling them how to do this and that. And, you know, waiting. You got to, <laughs> that's one thing about outsourcing. You got to coordinate everything with everybody, right? Because you got a guy doing graphics. You got a guy writing content. You got a guy doing the, uh, the web programming and all that kind of stuff, forget it. You're providing something that is ready to go turnkey. They buy it. Like I said, all they do is update their payment information on the site and bam, done deal. And a lot of people are willing to not only pay what they would pay for outsourcing, but they're willing to pay more, a premium, because it's already done. That, that cuts out all of their management that they've got to fool with. So it's already set and ready to go. Now, we're going to be focusing on Flippa. There are other sites that you can use uh, if you want to, but the reason that we're focusing on Flippa is because it is a huge site. 
Okay, but basically, it is an auction-based resource for buying and selling websites. So let's say you are looking for a website that's already you know up and running. You want a domain name. You want some content there, that kind of thing. You go to Flippa. You do a little poking around, and you find something, and you can bid on it. They also have buy it now uh, options there. So sometimes people can list uh, with a buy it now price, and you just buy it. And as you know, a site creator, which is what we're going to approach this from, you go there and you list your website in an auction environment and uh, people are going to bid on it. And I'm going to show you at the end of this training, I'm going to show you some killer tricks to get tons of rabid buyers bidding on your auctions on your websites. Okay. In our next video, we are going to take a look at the business model overview. I want you to have kind of a heads up as far as what we're going to be dealing with and what the different videos are going to be about. So I'm going to give you kind of a brief description and then we will jump right in. Now I want to talk to you briefly here about what we do after the sale and I want to mention some things that you can do to you know make a little bit more money <laughs> um, in the whole process here. It's actually uh, there are uh, some great opportunities that you have to increase the amount of money that you make outside of just the sale price. So let's go ahead now and look at one of my favorite ways to make a little bit of extra income and that is being a hosting reseller. Let me tell you what this involves and how you would go about doing it. It's not really that difficult. First off, what a hosting reseller is, is you go to a big hosting company like HostGator for example. You sign up with a special reseller account. There's no cost to do this. And what that reseller account allows you to do is set up other accounts and then resell that. It's kind of like you're your own hosting company. So when your customers would come to you, uh, they sign up for an account they don't know that you're actually just reselling for HostGator. So it's a little bit better than an affiliate relationship because, uh, you know, if, if people stick with you, then you have the potential there for recurring income on an indefinite basis. Okay. So the thing is, like with, uh, let's say that you did some kind of uh, just an affiliate thing and, and recommended hosting to somebody you might get 50 bucks out of the deal maybe even get a hundred bucks but over the long run being your own hosting company you stand to get a whole lot more and it's not expensive folks I'm talking you can pay uh, 20 30 bucks a month for a reseller account and you can just sell tons of accounts on that so what you have to do first is you set up your reseller account now the reason that we're talking about this now is because you have to get this set up before you flip the site, before you even make the site, in, uh, in order for this to be very appealing and attractive to them. Because what we're going to do, is typically, you sell a site and they've got to get it uh, switched over to their account. They've got to copy stuff over and, you know, it can be quite a bit of work. Well, you can actually circumvent all of that by doing the preparation beforehand and getting your reseller account set up. So uh, you sign up for the reseller account and then what you can do to kind of sweeten the deal is you can offer three months of hosting with the sale. So they buy your site, they're going to get three months of hosting. What that's going to do is help them uh, to be lazy and not worry about transferring the site. So they're just going to leave it there and they're going to keep working on it. And after three months, it's going to be like, you know, who cares? Just leave it there. Then you can either hit them for the monthly fee or you can charge them for six months, even a year of hosting up front. And it's nothing to pay a hundred bucks for a year of hosting. So if you got, let's say you got a hundred bucks for an AdSense site, then you're going to get another hundred bucks by hosting it for them. Double your money. So you can go to HostGator and you can sign up with a reseller account there. They provide a uh, billing system called WHMCS. 
This system is really, really cool because it will do everything for you. It'll take care of the billing. Uh, if you've got, uh, let's say you got a merchant account through Authorize.net, a credit card processor, you can set that up in there. Let's say you want to use PayPal, you can set that up in there. And it'll take care of doing the billing, like um, sending customers invoices when it's renewal time and managing domains and all that kind of stuff. It's a really cool, powerful package. Uh, what you do is actually you will set up your reseller account you will have WHMCS installed and once you have that working then whenever you're gonna do a new site you create a new customer so you create the customer you give them a hosting plan and then you register that domain that you're gonna flip and you know I'm talking about if you're starting over from scratch right and then Whenever a time comes to sell that, flip that site, you are so set because all you have to do is go into the customer account, change the name to the person who just bought it, send them the details, and they can actually log in right there and manage everything. They can enter uh, you know, payment information if they want to pay for a year up front. They can do everything. The billing system totally runs the whole show. It's a really cool way to go. Uh, another bright side to this is let's say you've got existing sites. You've already got sites there. You can still create an account, create a user account, get them a hosting account on there. And I recommend you do a new account for every site that you have. And it doesn't cost you anymore. You can have as many uh, accounts as you want because you're a reseller. You're paying for one main account and you create as many of these little sub accounts as you want to. But you set up a new account for ex an existing website and then once you've got that in there you go ahead and worry about all the hassle of transferring it because I understand you know you might this might be the first time you've ever heard of the concept of being a, a hosting reseller so you may already have websites out there okay but what you can do now is set up these accounts transfer them over to your new reseller account and boom you're ready to go uh, what's really cool about this too is let's say that you you do have your own domains and maybe you're paying hosting for those maybe you're paying 10 15 bucks a month for hosting uh, for different accounts you don't have to do that anymore because you're your own reseller you can sign up your own account set up your own account and you don't pay another dime okay so really pays for itself if you've already got websites this totally pays for itself just having it plus then you get extra income now, other ways that we can add some revenue, offer support services. And you can just put together some nice, attractive bundles for people, especially that are new to this. And you're going to find that a lot of your customers are newbies. They, the re, one of the reasons that they're coming here to Flippa is because they don't know how to do all that stuff. They just want the website. So you can sell them phone support, bundle some hours, you know, like they have to buy like five hours worth of support. You can charge them five hours for 150 bucks. And that way they can call you, they can get you to walk them through some things and help them, give them some training, some coaching. You could make yourself some videos for newbies, things like FTP and some basic HTML stuff and how to use WordPress, uh, all that kind of stuff that they're going to need to know how to do. You can make yourself some videos and sell it to them, you know, 25 bucks even. Just a little bit of extra money that you're making. You can create a course on writing articles because chances are they're going to need to do some article writing. Have all of this stuff set up. Uh, you know, if you're a real savvy marketer, you can have all of this stuff set up in an autoresponder sequence. And when they are a new customer for you, pop them in there and you're going to just, you know, sell all this stuff to them. Try to get them to go with it. And if they're newbies, a lot of times they're going to be like, yeah, I know I need this. And the good news is, I mean, check it out. They're newbies, right? So you say, okay, here's your site, you know, blah, 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 go to it. Even after they see the, uh, an email from you offering some beginner tutorials, maybe they say no. They don't, they don't buy anything. Once they start digging into it, they're like, oh, man, I need to know how to do this. What do you think they're going to do? <laughs> they're going to come back and get your videos. 
Okay. So if you know about setting up WordPress blogs and you know about using them and uh, which you will eventually, even if you don't know right now, you're going to know because that's what your whole business is going to be based on. Um, you can make these videos and make some extra money. Offer customization services. You can set up, tell them, you know, here's my hourly rate. I can go in and make updates for you. I can make changes, whatever you want me to do. Um, like if you're, like I said, let's say you, you know about WordPress, you know about HTML, you know things that need to be done. Now listen, a lot of these people, they're clueless. They don't know. That's why they bought the site in the first place. They want a site that's ready to go, and they don't want to fool with it. Um, so they might just want to hire you to make changes. Now, that doesn't mean the site can be junky and vanilla. It needs to be a total turnkey, ready-to-go site. But there might be a couple of things they want to change. Maybe they want to change a header. Maybe they want to change the format or the layout of it a little bit. Um, offer all of these services because chances are, some of them are going to take you up on it, and it's a way for you to make some extra cash. If there are things that you're not real good at, let's say graphics, for example. You don't do your own graphics. So you want to um, you know, offer still customization services. They're going to ask you about graphics. All you got to do is outsource, buddy. Go to Elance, go to Rent-A-Coder, go to Guru, um, and you know or you know work out some kind of relationship with somebody that's a good graphics artist and say hey I need a really good deal on you doing stuff for me like what's it cost for a banner let's work out something I can send you some regular work and then when your customer says hey change this change this change this and some of that stuff in there has to do with the graphics bam you just mark it up you do something that is uh, you know fair and for your management aspect of it and you have you know your buddy overseas <laughs> uh, doing the graphics for you while you're taking a nap now we also have the actual transferring of the site and there's some things that I want to go over with you briefly here because um, if like if they don't do the hosting deal if they say no I'm gonna put it on my own account and I'm not gonna continue hosting with you you're gonna have to do some stuff and even if they do do that, you're still going to have to transfer the domain. Transferring the domain typically takes about 30 minutes if you're able to do it yourself. If you got to coordinate with them or work something out with them, sometimes it can take a little bit longer. But it involves unlocking, you know, uh, domains and uh, pushing them and all this kind of stuff. The best solution is getting them to sign up with your registrar, and I'll tell you about that here in just a second. It'll only if you got to handle everything. It'll only take you about thirty minutes to transfer the domain. But for that to propagate the internet could take a few days. Now, typically, I see it working in about two hours um, most of the time when I make changes. But it, I, I have seen it take you know six seven hours, and I have heard uh, DNS nightmares of a few days. So what happens there is when you change. Uh, a, a, a server when you point it somewhere else when you point a domain somewhere else that information has to go through all the servers on the internet and sometimes that takes a while so uh, and sometimes it can work for you and not work for your customer yet because it hasn't the changes haven't hit their uh, ISPs servers okay now what you have to do the best uh, option like I told you is just simply pushing the site pushing the domain name. The way that that is done is you have them sign up at your registrar. So whoever you're using, let's say you're using Enom, the domain's registered there at Enom, have them sign up at Enom, at your registrar. Because then usually all you have to do is push the site to them. You're just transferring ownership of it over to their account. And usually there's not going to be any charge for that. So we don't have to worry about you know a transfer fee. If they're signed up with your registrar, boom, it just gets pushed over. I know with Enom, it's a piece of cake. I go in there. I've got, um, in I have a reseller account and I manage around three thousand domains. But whenever I want to transfer a domain to another Enom user, just select it, 
push, type in their ID, and boom, done. Now, what you will want to do is give them FTP access, uh, possibly. You don't have to. Uh, you might be leery of doing that, but you can set up an FTP account and give them access so that they can go in and they can grab files that they want to. Again, this is assuming that they're not going to host with you, so they've got their own account. They're going to they can go in there and they can grab it. Uh, give them ten days. You know, say I, I need you to have this off of there in ten days so that I can close that account. Now, there's a lot involved in transferring a site. That's why I say if you have it on your account, uh, on a reseller account, and you can offer them the convenience of just continuing that, a lot of times they're going to take it because it's a lot of work, and you're about to see how much work it is. I mean, it's not that it's really hard. I can do it now fairly quickly, but there are a lot of steps, and to a newbie, it's going to seem very overwhelming. Okay. You've got to copy everything that's in the public HTML folder. So you've got to download that. Then if you've got a WordPress installation or something else that happens to be used in a database, you've got to copy those databases. And the way that that is done is by logging into your cPanel. Go to the MySQL databases. You're also going to be dealing with PHP MyAdmin. Okay, so you go in and you see how many databases you got, which ones are going to have to be backed up. Go into PHP My Admin, select the database that you need to grab, choose the export column, and then select all. Choose SQL. Some people call that SQL. And then save as a file, and then click Go. What that does is back up the database. It gives you a copy of the database. Then you'll have to go to the new server and import the database. Okay, so let's say, for example, we've got a WordPress blog. It's got content on it. We want, uh, maybe it's even got users signed up, comments, all this kind of stuff. And we want to transfer all of that. So this is the way that we have to do it. Unless, well, I'll tell you in just a second. You're also then going to need to uh, have WordPress installed on the new server already. And then you go into the wp-config.php file on the new server and update those uh, database details, username, password, database, all that kind of stuff, uh, after you have done the import. So it's going to go in then and grab the uh, information, and everything should work you know, fine and dandy. Check this out, though. That's a lot of work. If you're going to be flipping sites, I totally recommend that you get a product called WP Twin. Because what this does is, you may, you may not be aware of this. If you do use WordPress, there's a backup feature, an export thing in WordPress. That does not give you everything. That does not fix your problems, believe me. Okay, it doesn't back up everything. If you use WP Twin, though, it is used to clone databases, WordPress databases. So what you can do is literally, it, check it out, do a Google search for WP Twin, watch the guy's video. Um, he made this plugin type of thing. It's like a script. And all you do is upload a file to the old server, run the file, it backs everything up. Grab that. All you have to do is then um, go to the new server, just create a database, just a generic database. It doesn't matter. And then uh, a WordPress uh, installation, sorry. Um, you create the WordPress installation, then you copy a little file up there and copy the backup up there. You run that file, and it replaces everything in the new installation with the old one. Boom, you just moved the whole WordPress site. And I do mean everything. Everything. Really awesome. Saves me. I couldn't even tell you hours that that program saves me. Now, some other things that we might want to consider. Do we have any email autoresponders on this site? Okay, are there email messages in a sequence or something? We're going to want to talk to them about uh, that. You know, maybe um, give them copies of those email sequences so that they can uh, put them on their autoresponder. Let them know which autoresponder service you're using so that, uh, you know, if they have an Aweber account, they'll be able to just, you know, update some stuff, create a list, update some numbers on the page, and boom, everything still works for them. 
are there any special directories, uh, maybe applications that you have running or uh, other things that wouldn't normally get backed up in the public HTML, like special scripts or something? Those are things that you'll have to consider uh, so that you can get those moved correctly. Are there any redirects set up on this page? A lot of times, affiliates will set up a redirect page that is going to, you know, so that you can give out something that doesn't look like an affiliate link. It looks just like a here's my site.com recommends, you know. Um, if you have something like that, you're going to have to configure that also. Let them know about that so that they can make updates to it so that they are, you know, at, signed up as an affiliate for whatever offers those are. Also, do you have any cron jobs that are required to automate some processes? Now, a cron job is something that goes into your cPanel and it's a special command that you specify how often you want it run and then it'll run them. Maybe it's to do a database compact or uh, to send out emails or check users, you know, whatever. There's all kinds of things that cron jobs do, backup things. So if you, what you got to do is go into your cPanel, go to cron jobs and see if there are any cron jobs there. If there are, you're going to want to copy those and have them installed on the new server as well so things keep running. Okay. Especially if it is something that has to do with, you know, delivering uh, files or uh, doing billing stuff, all that. A lot of times those have cron jobs. Now, what you can do is, of course, um, offer a lot of the services here to them for an additional fee. You know, tell them, I will move all this stuff over for you. Um, and you got to kind of feel out the customer, you know. They they might expect you to do that anyway, but uh, really they're just buying the domain and the uh, content that's on it. So them actually getting it over and installed on their server, their hosting account, if they're doing it that way, that really is their responsibility. So, um, you know, as a business owner, you got to feel things out. You know, is it worth uh, making a bad customer relation here? by not helping them or, um, you know, that's assuming that they expect you to help them. Most people, though, do understand that they just bought the site and they got to move it over. So uh, you can offer these services for an additional fee to help you make a little bit more money and take advantage of your time. And uh, also, like I said, you can alleviate a lot of this by having it set up on a reseller hosting account where you can make additional revenue residually um, by just having them kind of take over the account. Uh, and that's definitely the preferred method. Okay, so good luck with your site flipping. And again, folks, just get on this. That's the best way to start making money is to actually put your foot forward and, and you know, put your foot on the floor, put the pedal to the metal, get going.